The Citizen Report is a production of New Shannon Media. All content protected under copyright. This is The Citizen Report with Jonathan Shannon. And welcome to the Citizen Report. I'm John DeShaney. And thank you for joining me tonight. As always, this newscast is real in-depth American. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always good to be back with you. It's been a very busy news week and, um, and a very busy one as well in Israel. And I have a report I am going to share with you in a moment. This is a report that was relayed by one of my friends. I have a friend, I should say, that lives in Israel. And um, I and she's one of my Facebook friends, and she relayed this or shared this from one of her friends. I'm not going to say the name of my Facebook friend here tonight. Um, she's um, um, I, I. It is a very volatile situation in Israel. This is a news broadcast. It can be watched by anybody that happens to come across this. So I'm very being very mindful of that. I haven't asked directly to use this. But she did say to share it, so I'm going to share it, but I'm going to keep it anonymous um, because of the partly because of the ongoing situation in Israel. Um, and I'm mindful of that, of course. So this is a report from one of her friends, and it provides some background to what we're seeing now happen in Israel. I think this is going to be from, and I've just skimmed over this portions of this, but from what I can tell so far, it looks like this is going to be a pretty good explainer for what we're seeing happen right now in Israel. Before I start reading it, let me be, let me say something about the mainstream media. The mainstream media is trying to turn this inside out and blame Israel. This is why you need to be extremely discerning of what the information is out there right now. Um, the, the deep state is in panic. They're trying to get something going, I believe. I also believe there's a there's quite quite a bit of a spiritual component. I mean, there is anyway. I mean, anything in the Middle East, it's pretty much fair game to say that. Um, and I do believe we're getting very close to the end times. This is my personal, just my personal opinion on the matter. Um, and um, I think that that again. You got, you've got to do your own research. You've got to not take your information solely from the mainstream media. In fact, I would almost say you need to just get your information from independent sources. If you're going to watch the mainstream media, which I do as well a little bit, you need to be extremely discerning every second that you are. So um, I'm going to share my screen now, and I'm going to read this, um, this report and, um, you know, you, you listen to it, discern it, but I think this is going to be very, very helpful in explaining the situation in Israel, okay? So let me share my screen and my apologies in advance. I'm a little bit um, off my game tonight, um, as you can probably tell, but I'm doing the best I can. Um, I've been under a lot of spiritual uh, warfare, spiritual attack, and I've been knocked down really hard this week, so... Just keep me in your prayers. But having said that, let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and share my screen right now and let's start reading this report. Let me get a drink of water here. One second. All right. All right. Let me see. If, let me see if I can read this through. Okay. It reads, and I'm quoting here, to our dear family and friends too. As I write this post, missiles are being shot from Gaza into our cities in Israel and into Gaza by the IDF also. Many are dying and suffering so much on both sides. We are being warned that tonight there will be that there will come a large barrage of missiles will be shot into Israel between 6 and 7 p.m. tonight. Over 800 plus bombs came in the last days into our nation. And a small number of Israeli people have died and many wounded, some critically and more, in Gaza. We live in a quiet area between uh, Haffa, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Haffa and Tel Aviv in a village with about 20,000 at the beginning of the Carmel mountain range near the Mediterranean Sea. 
We are grateful for our family and all our friends who are praying, not only for us, but our entire nation and the innocent people who are living in these Arab areas such as Gaza. Our hearts are breaking to see what is happening on both sides, and we are in much prayer as we seek to be a blessing and comfort to those who are battling on so many levels. It is not an easy time, to say the least. Here is a great article that captured what the war is about and how it started. Israel under war, how we got here. It's mind-boggling to comprehend how we got to where we are today in less than a week's time. What began with a relatively normal country finally emerging from over a year of tremendous struggles with the COVID virus, with most everything opening up and returning to a familiar routine, we have suddenly found ourselves being catapulted into an all-out full-scale war resembling something out of a Hollywood blockbuster film. How did it all begin? A brief explanation is that in recent days, there had been a threat to evict six Palestinian families from the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikha Jarrah. Although this dispute actually began in 1876 when Israel was under Turkish rule, it was during that same year that Palestinian land order, landowners sold Sheka Jara land to two Jewish different trusts. In 1948, Jordan took control of that land and built many homes there in order to accommodate housing for Palestinian refugees. However, in 1967, that same plot of land through the efforts of the Six Day War returned to Jewish land, reju or I should say, returned to Jewish hands while Palestinians continue to live in what is clearly now Israeli territory. So everything that we are experiencing today is the culmination of a Jewish settler group having secretly purchased this land, which was historically owned by Jews, but where Palestinians continued to occupy without legal claim. As things began to turn political, the attorney general stepped in, eventually bringing the case before Israel's Supreme Court in an attempt to determine whether or not the present Palestinian resident should be evicted from the property and caused to leave since they had no legal grounds to remain there. Such a decision would have likely led to many more disputed homes in the area and the displacement of Palestinians who for decades have refused to leave. While that court determination was to have been made on Sunday, there was a decision to delay based on fears that this would set off a powder keg. Those fears were not unfounded as Palestinians began to protest daily, displaying an unprecedented amount of hatred and rage not seen before, especially in most neighboring towns and communities within the Green Line. This further set off a chain of events, which resulted in massive arrests in these Palestinian communities. As Jewish residents began to be terrified of living in these mixed communities, which had always coexisted in peace, but which suddenly became ignited by inflamed passions and deep unrest, it's interesting to note that most of those protests are being carried out by young people. On Friday night, Israeli police officers were forced to use stun grenades and rubber bullets on the Al Alkiza Mosque compound as a result of fierce fighting, which had taken place amongst Palestinians and security forces. On Monday, events escalated all the more as rockets began to be fired from Gaza into Israel, which was in turn met with Israeli airstrikes. It was reported that 24 people, including nine children, were killed as a result, although there is no official confirmation of those claims. Many Israeli police were also wounded in the conflict. Needless to say, the culmination came last night. Tuesday, May 10th, when Hamas issued an ultimatum to Israel saying that if we continue to strike back, they would attack Tel Aviv at 9 p.m. Ten minutes before that deadline, I was standing on my 23rd floor balcony, which was uninterrupted views to the port of 
Ash, Ash Dodd and suddenly noticed a barrage of lit up rockets in the dark sky, which resembled fireworks. But as I looked closer, I understood that they were pointing in the direction of Tel Aviv and coming straight toward straight toward us, straight towards us. It was less than three seconds later that we heard the alarms go off throughout the city, warning us to go into our bomb shelters. We ran and shut the metal door behind us, not knowing what was about to happen. As we sat there, we were being pounded and pounded by the sound of falling rockets all around us. We had no idea when it would stop. But it went on for an intolerable period of time, while friends and family fiercely texted us wanting to know if we were okay. Many were watching the attack in real time on their own television sets in their own countries. It seems surreal to be sitting in a bomb shelter knowing that we were under full attack in a country where, for my nearly 30 years of having lived there, lived here, I had never witnessed anything like that ever. Yes, we had already been in bomb shelters over the past seven or eight years, but nothing like the barrage of rockets, which I still cannot get out of my mind, ever occurred, especially in the center of the country. It was close to midnight when, I, when we felt it was quiet enough to leave the bomb shelter, which is one of our four bedrooms, in order to try to sleep in our own room. Sometime before 3 a.m., I was awoken by a huge boom, the likes of which I hadn't heard before, and thinking it must have, must be an attack on Gaza by our own, by our, our uh, by our armed forces. It occurred to me that there would likely be an immediate retaliation. Once again, it wasn't more than a couple of seconds before the citywide alarm went off, causing us to flee to our bomb shelter slash office which we prepared with a mattress in the event we were forced to sleep there. Sure enough, we spent the rest of the night inside, not feeling confident enough to return to our room. What is perhaps most frightening is the way our Arab neighbors have turned against Israel. Communities like Jaffa, which is walking distance from us and where we always shopped for meat and fish, have also become inflamed to the point where Jewish Israelis are now fearful to leave. Lod, not far from our main airport, in a place where I once taught some 50 students privately, has become possibly the most violent of all, to the point where three synagogues have been torched. These two cities, along with many others within Israel's Green Line, have been home to a large Arab population who have peacefully lived side by side with Jews and who have enjoyed a, a very high standard of living along with full civil rights, have viciously turned against the nation, which has in large part accepted them as equal partners in the Jewish, Jewish state. One second, my apologies. I'm gonna to to take a drink of water. The shocking display of rage and hatred has caused Jewish Israelis to no longer recognize these communities, which are a mere five to ten minutes away from every other Jewish Israeli community. At the moment, Israelis armed forces are in full defense mode, protecting us all and exacting a very heavy price for the attacks of the last few days upon the Jewish nation. It's interesting to hear that the massive protests, that massive protests against Israel are taking place in New York and other geographic areas predictably without even knowing the full context of why this is happening or how Israel has for many decades put up with being second class citizens in their own Jewish capital, all for the sake of a fake and temporary peace and the hope of avoiding the igniting the fire which has been lit over land which is rightfully ours, both historically and also through the spoils of war. I don't believe anyone can turn, on, turn the clock back on this latest chapter. The real passions and sentiments which have been let out in full force and where it leads will largely depend upon how determined each, each side is to accept the fact that Jews have only one homeland for which they have fought for and died during a 2,000-year-old dream which they will never again relinquish. 
that is the end of that report. I hope that uh, hope uh, hope this I was coherent enough. My apologies again. Um, I'm a little off my A game tonight, but let me let me try to summarize as best as I can this report, which I do believe is valid. Um, this report basically says the ways that, the way the that how Hamas has attacked Israel, in that. It's what I find very compelling, even just, just reading this, what I found so compelling about this report was that it described this real life example of this person um, having to take shelter. And it's just it's just horrific. It's horrific to think about. Think about how we live here in the United States. We have we're going through all these different troubles right now, and yet we're very blessed because we don't at least right now, we're not having to deal with stuff on this scale where we're literally having rockets fired at us and we're having to constantly hit the ground running to the bomb shelter. Um, I, 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 all I can say really is we just need to pray, pray for Israel. Because right now, they, the, this country, Israel, I mean, is under a lot of attack. And it's just, it's, it's awful. It's awful. And um, I think that one thing we need to pray as well, that in the aftermath, in the midst of all this, that God moves powerfully to save people. You know, those that don't know him in that country that God will use this as an opportunity because um, to, you know, bring Jesus into this, to, to save people, you know, to, to, to open their eyes to, to Jesus being the one true savior, the only way to heaven. And that we can, we can pray that, that this, all this conflict, all this awful stuff that's going on in Israel be, will be used for good, that somehow God will use this to bring people into an eternal um, relationship with him. Israel, you know, for all the, like I said, for all the troubles that this country, the United States goes through, that, I mean, I can't even begin to, I can't, I can barely even conceptualize because I've never had to experience, I've never had to think about a, I mean, yeah, we, you know, obviously growing up, you know, you obviously are taught that, yes, there's such a thing as a nuclear missile and one day, you know, the, the horrific can happen, you know, from a foreign country, but we're after, this is after the Cold War. I mean, this is 2021, but we're not having to think about it on the same scale that people during the Cold War had to, but Israel has to think about it every single day. And it's just, it just points out that true peace is never going to be achieved in Israel until Jesus returns and sets up his thousand-year reign, his kingdom, here on earth. And um, we just have to pray that people people um, in Israel, the Jews, the Arabs, that somehow God will open their eyes to Jesus and see their need for him, that he's the only way to heaven. Israel... Um, is under a lot of attack right now. I don't know what's going on there at this moment, but I can tell you that, you know, from pictures I've seen and stuff, it is absolutely, it's awful. It's a horror to think about seeing missiles or rockets, perhaps the more accurate word, rockets in the air. And it's just, it's, it's just so awful. You know, they have the Iron Dome system there. But I mean, when you're when you're watching a rocket being you know in the air, not knowing where exactly it's going to land, or more, more even more horrifically, once you realize where it's coming and it's coming your way, as this report mentioned, that's that's just awful. Because with a nuclear missile, I mean. <laughs> the best you can hope for, I mean, I'm just to be perfectly blunt about it. I mean, the best you can hope for is be close enough to it so you're immediately vaporizing. You don't even know it's happened. And um, but with a rocket like this, 
you know, I, I presume they're not nuclear. So if you get hit by it or in close proximity, but, you know, to where it landed, I mean, you might survive it, but may or may not survive it. But if you do, it, it could just be a whore to, you know, to live through that. So, I, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray right now. So, all my audience, let's bow our heads. And I'm not the best person to pray. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I don't. You know, people can pray pretty eloquently. I'm not one of those people, but I'm just going to pray a short prayer. And I just, I just hope that everyone else watching this or listening to this will come into agreement and pray as well. So, dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus, we just pray for Israel. We pray for peace. We pray that you will take what's going on there, Lord, and and bring peace. But that even even during this conflict, even during this up. Uh, you know, during this season of great uncertainty, wars and rumors of wars. And I pray, Lord, that you will use this as an opportunity to, to spread the gospel to Israel, to that part of the world, in a way that's never been seen before. Let there be many people that come to know you as, as, as their Savior, that they will see Jesus, that they will see that you are the, you are, the only way to heaven, that nobody comes to the Heavenly Father except through you. And we just, and I just pray, Lord, that, that, that you will be absolutely glorified, that people will come to know you, that people will be saved, that there will be peace in Israel once again. I pray, Lord, that there will be, um, that there will be many, many, more Christians in Israel soon than there are now because people will turn to you, that they will see their need for you. And, and also while I'm praying, I also pray, Lord, that here in the United States, that there will be a restoration of law and order. The wrong that was done in November will be made right. And that once again, that this will truly be, um, and I pray, Lord, that people will um, call upon you to save America. And that, that once more, that America, the eagle, the country of the eagle, will be able to fly high again, truly, um, as, as truly a Christian nation. And that the unborn children will be that there will be sanctity of life from the moment of conception. And I pray, Lord, that there will be a new generation for however long before the rapture, Lord. If, if the rapture is meant to happen imminently, then so be it. But if, if, there, if there is to be a period of time of saving of souls in the meantime, um, let there be many people that come to know you, Lord. Let there be... Let this country be a breadbasket for the gospel. And I pray, Lord, that the, the relations between this country and Israel will become stronger again. Because we all know, under what we've got now here, <laughs> um, uh, it, it's bleak. Uh, the outlook on that is bleak at best. But, Lord, we know that the governments and the people can be two totally different things. And I believe, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that the people of Israel and the people of America will come together under the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And I just pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, anyways. Um. I'm going to move on now to the Amanda Grace video. For those that thought, if you if you watched my live stream back on Tuesday evening, if you've already heard it, if you if or if you've already seen the video that I'm going to share a portion of, if you feel like you don't need to see it, you, you you're welcome to tune out at this point. But I feel like it's I feel like I would be doing um, due diligence by showing this, so you can see it, you can hear it better, and also I'm going to be playing. A little more of it than I did on Tuesday evening. So 
my apologies again. I'm a little off my A game. Let me take a drink of water. All right. <laughs> um, so let me, and my apologies once again. I, I don't like having it, you know, to, I, I like to speak more fluently and better, more smoothly than this, but it's just not happening tonight. So um, let me let me give you a little bit, a small update to what Amanda Grace is going to be saying. I don't know if she was aware of this when she did the broadcast. This is from the AP, and I know it's the AP. They're about as trustworthy as a $3 or $4 bill. But this is what they say, Baffert. Antifungal meds given to Medina Spirit had steroids. So now we have the um, um, the trainer Bob Baffert admitting that he did give the quote unquote Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit with he he, he admitted to giving him an antifungal ointment that contained the steroid uh, betamethasone. So um, I don't know if he's if he's admitting that he knew what he was getting into, or you know I don't know exactly the the precise intent with this admission, but we do have something of an admission here. And um, um, but let me just say, Baffert said, and I'm going to read this quote here. I promise I'll keep this part short, and then I'll move on and play the Amanda Grace the portion of her video again. It says, quote, uh, from Bob Batford, my investigation is, is continuing and we do not know for sure if this ointment was the cause of the test results or if the test results are even accurate as they have yet to be confirmed by the split sample. I have been told that a small, that, or that a, uh, pardon me, I have been told that a finding of a small amount such as 21 picograms could be consistent with application of this type of ointment. Um, Baffert said at a news conference Sunday at Churchill Downs that he did not know how the substance made its way into the cult system. So that's an interesting development. I don't know if Amanda Grace was aware of this, but I'd still say there are certain rules that horses have to, you know, in these Kentucky Derby that they have to abide by. You can't have certain steroids. You can't do certain things. You know, it gives them an unfair advantage. Amanda Grace is going to explain the what she believes is a prophetic parallel between this and what happened in November. I'm going to get to that now. And again, thanks for bearing with me tonight. Uh, my my uh, speaking isn't particularly the smoothest, but I'm going to share in one second the screen. And now I'm going to play this for your consideration. The um, I don't even need that open. So um, this is I'm picking it up from about the same point as Tuesday night's live stream. I'm gonna uh, when I played this on Tuesday night's live stream, I'm just gonna pick it up from about the 40 minute mark. I'm gonna I'm I'm at least planning to let it go on a little longer. So I think at that point I've done my due diligence with sharing this excerpt. So let's pick it up because I think this is very very interesting. So I'm gonna, I'm now gonna quit talking for a little while and I'm gonna let Amanda Grace in this video do the talking. Why do I think the horse name Medina Spirit is so important? This doesn't happen every year, but on pivotal tipping point years in the country, this seems to happen. You know why? Because principalities want to invade every area of life when they want to try to take over. This is why. I'm going to take you back to 2015 for a minute. Obama was coming to the end of his second term. The Triple Crown that year, which is the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont Stakes, which is in Long Island, there was a horse by the name of American Pharaoh. American Pharaoh, who was going for the Triple Crown who actually won the Triple Crown. And me and Barbara, my godmother, got on the phone who mentored me in the prophetic. And we said, this is the spirit trying to take over this country. American Pharaoh. Obama is going for the Triple Crown. He's gonna to try to put a puppet in there and run a third term from behind the scenes. 
And we realize this from this horse. Because when a principality goes to take over, you're going to see it seep in to the most unexpected of areas, okay? Fast forward now, because that the country was at a tipping point. An outsider named Donald Trump comes and wins big in the election and upsets the Triple Crown, okay? Now, fast forward to this year. Fast forward to this year. So, this year, I happen to notice there's a horse whose name was or is Medina Spirit. What happened with this horse and why is it prophetic for what's going on in the country right now? What can this horse, Medina Spirit, teach us about the election and what's coming? I'm going to read to you the news article. In a news conference Sunday morning, Baffert, who's the trainer, he's one of the best trainers actually in horse racing, said the horse tested positive for 21 picograms of methazone or methazone, 11 picograms above the legal limit in Kentucky racing. Shortly afterward, Churchill Downs, Churchill Downs, which hosts the Derby, announced his suspension. Failure to comply with the rules and medication protocol jeopardizes the safety of the horses and the jockeys. It also gives the horse an unfair advantage over other horses because if it has a bigger amount of anti-inflammatory in its system, it can run faster and not feel pain, okay? Baffert said the drug test results were disturbing and the biggest gut punch in racing for something I didn't do. So he's claiming he didn't do it. He said he didn't know why Medina Spirit would have tested positive for the drug, which is an anti-inflammatory. He said that the incident was a complete injustice and that he feels that he was wronged. Um, now, what happens from here? If the findings are upheld, Medina Spirit, so they're doing another in, uh, investigation, we'll get to that. If the findings are upheld, Medina Spirit's results in the Kentucky Derby will be invalidated. Will be invalidated. His win will be invalidated. And Mandaloon will be declared the winner, who was second. Churchill Down said of the horse that was the runner-up, um, it wouldn't comment and that it wouldn't, it, and that it would, quote, trust the process. This is very suspect. Okay. So now they're doing an investigation. And if it comes back that they feel there was foul play with this horse, the horse is going to be banned from the Preakness and banned and stopped from running. Um, it's looking into the test results. The Kentucky Horse Racing um, Commission is looking into the test results. It isn't Baffert's first drug testing scandal. Medina Spirit is his fifth horse to have failed a drug test in the past year. Okay. Now, and then there was a quote, there is a problem in racing, but it's not Bob Baffert. Um, so now, why is this important to what's going on in the country? They're probably, you're probably thinking, where the heck is she going with this? Okay, Medina Spirit. The country is at a tipping point. It is at a pivotal year. Medina is a city in Western Saudi Arabia, population 1.1 million. Medina is Arabic for city. So Medina spirit is an Arabic spirit. Hmm. Hmm. 
Who's pulling the strings behind Joe? And the horse named this wins the Kentucky Derby, the first leg of the Triple Crown. The horse was not a favorite. Listen to what I'm about to say. Was not a favorite to win, but won. Was not favored to win. No one thought this horse was going to win. And then it begins to unravel because the horse tests positive for something that gave it an unfair advantage, which means most likely the race was fixed. The rate, there was an unfair legal advantage above. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi, bud. His competitors. <laughs> I never sneeze on camera. Okay. So the horse, Medina Spirit, Arabic in nature, has an unfair advantage in a race he is not slated to win. Does this sound familiar yet? Does this sound familiar of what we're seeing happen in the country? Does this sound familiar? for the election and now there's an investigation into the cheating now there's an investigation into the cheating for a horse named medina spirit arabic spirit that was never slated to win that had an unfair fixed advantage from the beginning that caused it to win above a horse that was favored to win. Sounds very familiar. Now this happened the year with American Pharaoh too. This happened the year, the years the country is at a crucial tipping point. So this happens over the weekend, Arabic spirit. And what happens at the Temple Mount today in Israel? Palestinian rioters set off fireworks in the mosque. It causes a fire. A tree catches fire too close to the Western Wall. After a horse in America, because America and Israel are, you know, you know, one goes, the other goes. You know what I mean? Arabic spirit gains an unfair advantage that now causes an investigation. And don't get me wrong, there's some wonderful Arabic people out there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the pagan Arabic spirit and the brotherhoods and the things of that nature that do not serve Almighty God, that do not serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? There are Arabic countries that are involved in this operation that helped give somebody an unfair advantage in a race they were not slated to win. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you something else interesting. Now, I'm still putting this together, so I'm only going to give you a little piece to this, okay? But Barbara had brought up to me the Kraken, that the Lord had brought back to her remembrance the Kraken, okay? Which is a cephalopod. It's a giant squid, okay? One head controls a bunch of tentacles. You've got a bunch of countries, Arab, the southern part of North America, Mexico and others operating as a Kraken. Now, interestingly enough, in 2017, Mexico, Mexico and Iran started meeting again to deepen their relations. I don't find that a coincidence. Mexico is one of the countries she mentioned and I went and did some digging. Now, funny enough, there is a cryptocurrency exchange and bank named Kraken. 
named Kraken. There is an attack coming on cryptocurrency. I am telling you something big is going to happen with cryptocurrency. And it's no coincidence that the Lord had me go do some digging and find this cryptocurrency bank named Kraken. Because there are multiple countries involved in this. One head is controlling a bunch of tentacles that are reaching out and trying to destroy multiple countries at the same time. This is why you see the events transpiring in America, you do. And at the same time, look what erupts on the Temple Mount in Israel. And now there are rockets being fired back and forth where the Israeli Air Force is now going to go in and bomb. They're going to go in now and bomb because the tension is so high there because when the enemy and when this kraken of countries perceives Israel's protector, and this is where they're making the mistake, the United States of America as weak, they try to advance. The problem is Israel has a greater protector and his name is Adonai, almighty God, and they are the apple of his eye. And I promise you, because they are making this mistake, they are being baited into a trap and God is going to shake those countries. God is going to shake those countries who are doing this. They are being baited into a trap. They think there is a position of weakness in Israel right now, but God is still on the throne. God has a covenant with Israel and almighty God, the righteous judge, the banner of Israel is going to now intervene. And these countries are going to be shaken in a way they have never been shaken up to this point. Mexico thinks it's cute what they're doing. Guess what? When God shakes the entire crack and worth of countries, they're all going to shake. They're all going to shake together. All of them involved. This is coming. This is coming fast and this is coming furious. And we need to seriously pray for Israel right now. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel and intercede before the throne of God for them and pray for the peace of Israel right now. Because they're making a move and they're making a move at the same time the ground zero count is going on in Arizona. It's not a coincidence. They are trying to hit multiple parts of the world at once. Watch that ground zero area of Arizona. And I'm going to tell you this too. That American Airlines stream goes all the way back to the beginning, the first 9-11. And there is a lot that's going to be exposed about the first 9-11. And what really happened and what really went on. And now they're desperate and they're scared. Because they're digging in ground zero and they're going to find a lot of evidence. And so now they're planning another 9-11 style attack. And so just as that's being planned, the Temple Mount erupts in Israel. This is no coincidence. Yes, it's like dominoes. Hank Kuhneman said the same thing. So... We need to seriously pray because there is a spirit that is trying to advance on this country right now that is foreign and it's a principality. And the proof of Medina spirit and other things going on in the country are proving this, are proving this. And we need to be able to read. You see, the sons of Issachar were anointed in that they could discern the signs of the times. Let me tell you something. Principalities will creep into every area, including if it's a child's toy, to get glorified. They want to consume every area of life. They want to be glorified in every area. It's no coincidence this horse is embroiled in the middle of a scandal, in the middle of the count in Arizona, in the middle of the eruption of the Temple Mount in Israel. This is no coincidence and we need to pray, armor up, brace ourselves, 
arm ourselves with the word of God. And I'm going to tell you something. The Lord said in a word I delivered a couple months ago or so, probably more around November, just when all seems bleak and lost. My spirit will step in. Just when all seems bleak and lost, my spirit will step in. Let me see if I can quickly find this. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to close with this. This was from September 14th, 2020. The Lord was warning what was going to happen. He said, I, the Lord God, am baiting and allowing them to move in. I'm allowing them to move in. And just when they think they have gained enough ground, they have stolen enough. They have terrorized enough. They have cornered their prey. I, the Lord God, shall by my power and outstretched arm send in my warring angels to strike the heads and split the bodies and cause a mass retreat, says the Lord. A holy backdraft in the midst of a fire. Interesting. Will cause a major hit to the kingdom of darkness, for I am the Lord God. I change not. I neither sleep nor slumber. I will not, that's capitalized, be mocked, even in mercy. The mouths of the mockers, scoffers, prognosticators, instigators will be struck and shut, says the Lord. As my people worship and praise and go forth boldly crying out to me, taking authority under my son, Jesus Christ, there shall be a sudden shift in October. I think the Lord's talking about this October. Something big is going to shift this October. Where all dark exploits will shift and weaken, for disaster shall strike their plans, a crippling strike. The hall of the leg shall be taken down, says the Lord. And just when it may look bleak, my spirit shall sweep through and cause miraculous events to take place that will change the tone and the course of what may appear to be a runaway train, says the Lord God. Jehovah, this is why I think it's this October. Be in expectation for long-awaited answer to prayer shall break forth. The door shall suddenly open. The answer shall suddenly come at my word. The enemy shall not, that's capitalized, stop it, for I am sending my warring angels ahead, and he shall not stop what I, the Lord, am doing in the lives of my capital people. They shall move into promise in the midst of chaos and shall be placed in positions that I, the Lord, ordain for them to bring glory to my name. For in this hour, make no mistake, all capitals, my children, I shall and will be glorified, and my power will break forth in an awesome way. Get ready, be in prayer, be watchmen, and call on the name of Yeshua. That is an excerpt from September 14th, 2020 then that's what I'm going to end with tonight. Okay. I'm going to pick it back up here now. So I hope that that was, a, that was helpful, me playing that, what she said on her live show back on May 10th. On her channel, you can find it at Ark of Grace Ministries on YouTube, okay? Now, let me say a couple of things. First of all, we do need to be absolutely in prayer. Spiritual warfare, I'm just going to say, is very, very real. Even during um, this show, I, I, I do believe that, I, I mean, I, I'm being, I mean, I'm, I'm having it go into battle right now. It's like I'm being, I'm being just um, attacked you know, battle of the mind is very, very real. And right now, the, um, the, the enemy knows that his time is very, very short. God has a purpose 
for what's going on right now. He is allowing certain things to happen right now, and I guarantee you, it ha he has God has a reason for every season. He has a purpose. He has a will in every season. I do believe the rapture is coming very soon. It could happen any moment. I believe that God has things he wants to accomplish. And I'm telling you folks, you need to understand there, there is truly a spiritual war. I said this on my live stream, literally, um, mere hours ago, about um, when I was on when I was live on uh, Wednesday afternoon, I'm taping this um, early Thursday morning. On my Wednesday afternoon live stream, I said that when Biden he has his handlers. But beyond that, or, or I should say, even behind the, his handlers, is a spiritual principality. And it's trying to come into this country, to take control of this country, to destroy this country. Because it has to destroy this country because we are the last... Well, let me put it to you this way. If this country goes, the whole world, whole world goes. This country, I believe, America, was founded to um, for religious freedom. From this country, people, many people, go forth with the gospel. This country has millions of Christians. And the enemy is trying to choke that. He is trying to destroy that. And let me tell you something. Spiritual warfare is very, very real. I don't do this as much as I should do, but we need to put on the full armor of God every single day. And I haven't been doing that as well as I should have been lately. So I'm telling myself this as much as I'm telling you. Let me tell you something. I feel I feel like I should say this. I became a Christian when I was six years old in two thousand in the year two thousand three. The same month that I was brought forward publicly to the front of my church, what was I was a member of a church, actually technically still am a member of that church to this day, but. Okay, anyways, I was brought forth to the front of my church, which was the First Baptist Church in Harrison, Arkansas. I became a Christian on January 22nd, 2003. In May of that year, I was brought forth to the front of the church. Those of you who are who have been in church, you know exactly what that's about. You know, you're brought forward, you know, you're introduced, that kind of thing. I was also baptized that month. That month... Our car, we were in a car. Our car was totaled. It happens to a lot of people. But around that same time, I don't exactly remember how how close to the same time. What I don't mean the same day. I'm that's not what I'm saying. I just don't remember exactly because you know I'm, I was young then. But um, it wasn't long. I think it was after that. I think that we saw another horrific car crash. So let me tell you something. I believe that the enemy was throwing a fit because I became a Christian and I was, you know, that was, you know, those acts I mentioned about going in front of the church, being bad, and then, you know, at a, in a different, at a different time that same month, I was baptized. Um, you know, I, I was brought forward to the front of the church and all that stuff to be introduced, I should say, and then baptized. That, that month, 
the enemy was throwing a fit. I don't know if I've ever said this on a broadcast before, but I'm saying it tonight. I do believe that the enemy was throwing a fit because he lost me because I became a Christian. So when you become a Christian, you see it in heavenly places, right? You, you no longer belong to yourself. You belong to Jesus. You belong, belong to God. And you're sealed by the precious Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. And the enemy was throwing a fit, I believe. And the enemy has been trying to attack me ever since. And um, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, this spiritual stuff is very, very real. So... People that just see things in the physical realm, they don't stop to think about to consider the physical, or they don't stop to consider the spiritual realm. Well, I'm telling you right now, they're very, it's very real. And everything you see in the news, everything you see going on has something behind it, good or bad, in the spiritual realm, whether it be good from good or from bad. So I, I'm trying to figure out what, what, what else I should say before wrapping up, but I just, I'm just trying to get people to understand, um, the situation here with what's going on with Biden, what's going on with Israel, what's going on in Arizona, what's going on in all these different things, all of it. Is not just things happening in the news and, oh, this is what's happening, that kind of stuff. There is a very real spiritual battle. So I think I'll end it right about there, but I just want to thank you for watching the Citizen Report. Um, keep me in your prayers, obviously. Um, we'll have to see what happens with Israel. Um in the, in in the name of Jesus, let's let, that Israel it has peace. That the injustices that happened with November here in America is righted. All the wrongs with the November event, shall we say? Because you know the algorithms have to be so careful uh, that the November event will be made right. And. Um, Interesting parallels between the Kentucky Derby and what we're now seeing happen in Arizona. So, I will just briefly say um, that it is my understanding that Colonial Pipeline here in the United States has restarted operations several hours ago, a number of hours ago, and um, hopefully in the coming days the, the gas supply will begin to return to normal in the southern, southeastern, I should say southeastern United States. Um, obviously, uh, the, the situation in on with the I-40 bridge over the Mississippi river is concerning because that is a critical part that is a critical cross point because the Mississippi river basically divides most of America, except for maybe a portion of Minnesota, but pretty much in general down the, the continuous United States, it divides America. So we have to pretty much cross the bridge to get to the other side got all these trucks, all this infrastructure, all this economy go, being, being transported. To have a bridge shut down like that is a big deal. So I'll keep tabs on that and bring you updates in future broadcasts. So God bless each and every one of you. And thank you for watching the Citizen Report. Let me just briefly remind you of my website, citizenreport.tv. The other link, thecitizenreport.weebly.com. I'm going to try very quickly to pull up this graphic so you can see all the ways you can stay connected. I'm doing so as quickly as I can. There we go. Stay connected with the Citizen Report, citizenreport.tv, thecitizenreport.weebly.com. You can stay connected on the Citizen Report social media page, stinger.live forward slash the Citizen Report. You can obviously subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jonathan Ryan Shannon. I do apologize. I'm going to have to get another drink of water in.
I also now have a channel on Rumble. I have not posted any videos there yet on that channel, but I I plan to eventually migrate most new episodes there in the future. Not yet. I'll announce when that's going to happen in due course. So um, I'm also personally on Gab, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube basically is, a, is my personal channel. I use it to upload the Citizen Report to uh, most, most episodes anyway right now. And um, hopefully, hopefully I can get that worked out about Rumble. Uh, but anyways, I just want to thank you for watching the Citizen Report. As I, um, and um, I'll catch you guys in the next broadcast. Hope everyone has a great day. And I'll, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of the Citizen Report. God bless each and every one of you. And have a great evening, everyone. I'll see you next time.